Oh, the family of a woman who was hit and injured by a rubber bullet is just preparing to speak out in La Mesa in front of the La Mesa Police Department. We're going to send you there right now. Right in the forehead. They shot her in the forehead. She fell down and she had to go to ICU. They didn't send an ambulance for her. Bystanders had to pick her up and take her to the ICU. And when she got to the hospital and they put her in the ICU and they put her in a medically induced coma and they intubated her, she was alone. She was alone because of COVID-19. Her son couldn't visit her. None of her family could visit her. And for what? For what? She was protesting peacefully. We are tired. We are not going to stand for this. This is the last time you will see me cry because I am ready. We are ready and we are going to go. That officer needs to be fired now. We need to know who he is and he needs to go. La Mesa Police Department, La Mesa uh, City Council, Everybody needs to know we are ready, we are coming, and we are not going to stop. She looks like my mom. My mom. No more. No more. We are going to get justice. Justice will not wait, and we will not be silent. Everyone who is watching this, I want you to call the La Mesa Police Department and ask them, what is that officer's name who decided that he could attempt to murder a nonviolent protest. What is his name? The community needs to know. We need to know. We demand to know. We want to know now. No more waiting. We are tired. No more. No justice, no peace. With that, I will let Ahmad give some comments. And then after uh, Ahmad speaks, if his brother arrives, his brother will also add some comments. And then I'll take questions after. Thank you. How y'all doing? My name is Amaya Furkran. <clears throat> My mother was attacked out here. That's how I feel. She was brutally attacked on a peaceful protest. If I commit a crime, I'm going to jail. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Whoever that was needs to be still stand and held accountable for it. That's attempted murder. My mom was shot between the eyes, 59 years old, protesting. She don't have a right to protest. And even if she don't, it don't stand for her to be attempted murdered on. Murdered or whatever may have happened. It's not right. We need some answers. We want some justice. My family's not feeling this. This is not tolerated. If I commit a crime, as I said, I will go to jail. We all know this. We need some answers. We want some answers, and we're not going to stop until we get some answers. Bottom line. I don't believe uh, Azim has arrived yet. Uh, do we have any questions? Anyone have any questions yeah, for me? Can you, yes. Um, can you guys, there's been a little bit of this reported already, but tell us a little bit about, or maybe, and maybe he can answer too, but tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, what kind of, uh, where she lives, what she's like, you know, her family, that um, you, kind of, you I, know, bring the human aspect into this. I think Amada would be the best to talk about his mom. I mean, um, you want to talk about that? Actually, my mom lives here, in, right here in La Mesa. She lives up the street. Um, she works. She go to work every day. She tries to, you know, no breaking no law. She's in recovery. She goes to recovery every day. That's really her program. She goes to the Lano Club in Southeast San Diego. That's like that's really what she do every day. She's in recovery. She tries to stay focused and do the right thing and deal with her grandkids. That's my mom's day to day program. She has numerous friends that's calling her outpouring. They want to know what's going on. Same thing I tell you. My mom ain't no bad person. All my mom was trying to do is live life, be right, and we tied in justice. My little brother was just, my little brother just died. My family just, it's just like, and the way he died was the police had something to do with it. So it's just like, my mom is upset. She's frustrated. So she has the right to come out here and protest. My mom is a good person. She smiles, laughs, takes pictures. That's what she liked to do. She go on Facebook, and that's why she was on Facebook as it happened. She's showing. You see it there. She ain't breaking no law. My mom is a... You, when you meet her, you'll see her. You'll see her smile, regardless through all the pain. She's still gonna smile through it all. Have you been able to talk to her? She's been in the hospital. Yes, I have. What is she saying about? She can't say nothing. She has a tube down her throat. She just gave me a thumbs up and shook her head. I have a question. How can we support the family? Do we need to raise money for tickets? People to fly in, transportation, food. Let me answer what that question. Uh, there, there is currently a GoFundMe page. If you uh, look up Ms. Furcon's name, you will find the GoFundMe. 
So if you'd like to donate to help with some of her medical bills, which we believe will be nearing a million dollars since she has been in ICU for days now, um, feel free to, to donate that way. Uh, another way that, that we can get help is everyone who was there on May 30th, 2020, please, please, please contact my office at the Pride Law Firm. We want to hear your story. We want to see if you have any video evidence. Uh, like I said, I've already seen dozens of videos and I have yet to see Ms. Furcon do anything improper or illegal, and that's because she didn't. She never did, okay? So everyone else who was there, who may be a witness, who may have video, please provide that to us so that we can get justice for Ms. Furcon, because Ms. Furcon can't speak for herself. We will speak for her. This is her other son, Azim. Welcome, Azim. Uh, they would like to know a little bit about your mom. Just tell them a little something. Well, from my personal experience with my mom, you know, she's, She's a wonderful person, man. She's one of the strongest people I know. Like any time that I was feeling down or anybody, she was the energy. She was the one who provided the happiness and the joy. And she was that for the community of people that loved her and still love her to this day. And she just wants, wants to, you know, recover perfectly. And I feel like this is a terrible situation and this shouldn't happen at all. Like this shouldn't be something that we have to deal with. There has to be change. There has to be justice for the situation. And my mother would definitely want that. And I know right now that she's just trying to recover, but justice is also a key thing in this situation. And I just feel like the heart that she has is so big and so strong and she won't, she won't fail to recover perfectly. I know that. Thank you. You mentioned there was a, that you just recently lost your brother. Yes. You know, sharing more details about that? Well, my brother was the same thing. He carried the same kind of energy as my mom. He was a very strong person. And even while dealing with his different situations in life, he was able to give all of our family energy and be there for us. And so I know that hurt her deeply. And so that's what made her even, you know, gather up the strength and think that she wanted to be part of this and wanted to be part of that change because of situations that happened with him. So I know that he was, he was just a powerful individual. And I think that he got that trait from her. Did he die no. in police custody? Uh, no, he was not in police custody. Wasn't. No, he uh, wasn't. Hold on one second. And then uh, briefly, just to add on to, to what Azim is saying here, I want to be plain, painfully clear. The injuries that Ms. Ferg suffered are very serious, near fatal. She has been in the ICU. She is still in the ICU. We do not know when she will come to the ICU. We do not know if she will lose her eye. We just don't know. So we're here today talking about it, but just know that Ms. Furcron has a very, very, very long road ahead of her for holding her hand up, saying no justice, no peace, and for videotaping the police officers. Have you spoken to law enforcement yet, Sheriff and Lame PD? I, I haven't. I've, I've tried, but I haven't received a response yet. Um, the only thing that I know that has been said as of now is that the Sheriff's Department is saying, oh, it wasn't us. Uh, we don't know if that's true or not yet. We believe it was the La Mesa Police Department, but without La Mesa Police Department's help, we don't know who fired that shot. And you said early on, and I don't, I don't want to misquote you, what did you mean by Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I, I am upset, as upset as I can be. And when I say I'm ready and I'm coming, I mean through the legal process of the courts. We will take La Mesa Police Department to court, have our day in court. Ms. Furcon's story will be heard and the jury will be able to, to see and assess what they think happened. We know what happened. Excuse me, sir. One of the emails we got at our station was uh, somebody who had uh, watched her video and said that she threw a soda can right before she got shot. Uh, two questions on that. Do you think that is, is something that was related to the shooting? Mm -hmm. And do you think that the timing of that, her throwing that can and her getting shot, indicates that it was a deliberate to the head shot? Okay. So first and foremost, uh, I have no evidence that she threw anything. She dropped the can when she got hit in the head with a bullet or a projectile, yes. Uh, but I, I've spoken with witnesses who were standing right next to her. 
right next to her. So whatever witness you spoke to may have seen a video or something that they thought was a can that was thrown, but I've spoken to at least three witnesses who were right next to her who said no can was thrown, her hands were up, and she was hit in the, in the face. Now, do I believe that she was targeted in the face? Absolutely. I got a question. Absolutely. So even if, even if she did throw a can, did she deserve to get shot in the face? That's absolutely, absolutely not. That's the problem. Absolutely not. Might be the same answer, but do you know if police have said uh, that they had already deemed it an unlawful protest at that point? Uh, I, I know that for sure that the police did not say anything to the pro protesters regarding we are going to open fire, we are going to use tear gas. Those words were never once spoken by anybody from the sheriff's office, anybody from the La Mesa Police Department, um, any witness that I've talked to so far, they have all said the same thing. They were all standing there peacefully, and then the tear gas came, and then the bullets rained down. You sent a letter to the department. So you had some specific demands. Yeah, so the letter that we sent to the department, uh, and when you say specific, I, they were kind of more general. Uh, what we want is we want that officer gone. That officer, the one who tried to kill someone by shooting them in the head, is still an officer. He still has the power to arrest someone. He still has the power to use force upon someone else's body. He should not have that power anymore. To whom much is given, much is expected. And he did not stand up to what he was supposed to do as a police officer. We've already obtained the, um, the rules from La Mesa with use of force and the bean bags or the rubber bullets. Either one of those are supposed to be aimed below the waist. Why are they supposed to be aimed below the waist? Because a shot above the chest in the head can be fatal. It can be fatal. And like Ahmad just said, even if she did throw a can, she did not. Even if she did, is her punishment attempted murder? Is her punishment a lifetime of healing? Is her punishment, I see you? That can no longer be our military aggressive controlling police force. We need something different. And I for one am ready to stand on the front lines and with the community and together, let's make this work. We all know what we saw. We all know that was improper. Is there any coordinated effort between your clients and other people who've been um, attacked not a coordinated effort as of such. As you know, my client is still in a coma, still in ICU. So as of now, there's no coordinated effort from her on that front. From me, I have actually also talked to various other people, various other people that were shot by La Mesa Police Department, some driving by in cars. It's beyond me why a police officer would shoot at a moving vehicle with the driver. He could have killed someone. So, sorry. So like I said, I've heard many stories uh, from the protest. All the stories have been the same so far. Uh, none of the witnesses that I've And you've been watching and listening to the family and a spokesperson for a woman who was hit and injured by a rubber bullet during a protest in La Mesa over the weekend. 